Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today I want to continue with a little bit of Nat messaging um, for on the miscellaneous stuff. And so last time um, we look at just installing Nat or running it from Docker. Well, not really installing, just download and running really. And you can use the Nat tool to publish and subscribe. We didn't write any code. Um, I did it all in one recording at the time, but then I realized I thought it was a much longer video than I wanted it to be. And so I decided to split it. So in this part two, I'm going to continue exactly where we left off. Uh, we will write some code to publish and subscribe. So I'll give you a reminder in the video when you should, when you're about to make the directory to use part two instead of part one. And that's going to be the only thing that um, you have to pay attention to. The Git repo is going to reflect the correct fact, which means that oh, when I check in today or whenever you see this video posted, um, you're going to see that part two is where the code that I'm writing today is stored. All right. So with that said, um, you know, the usual thing, if you're here and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you haven't hit the notification bell to be notified when I post videos, you might want to do that to be notified when I post videos and definitely engage on the channel comment. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know what you think about Nats itself. I think it's super awesome. Let me know if you've used anything similar or you've been looking for something like this. So yeah, let me know. Um, there might be something out there that you know of that I have not seen and I would love to, you know, explore it. Nat flew under my radar, like I said, in part one for a long time for years. So, um, definitely I would like to know if there are other things out there. Okay. So with that said, let's jump in and we'll start in the same directory we're working in, in part one. Now this is just playing around about the command line. So don't sweat it. If you can't find the Nats command, let's just jump into doing this in code. Now that you, this one thing I know is that at this point, everyone should have a NAT server up and running because we have Docker and we've downloaded it and run it. So that part is not hard. This part, other part here with the testing command, you might not be, might not have the, the tools for this. So let's get out there and make sure that everybody can play around. Okay. So let's review your server running. This is our directory. Let's go back up. And for me, I'm going to remove this because I don't really need it. Right. Um, I have it running in Docker, plus I don't want to check it in. So um, for that reason, I'm going to remove it. But if you need it, you got to keep it somewhere else. So here I'm in my directory. And so let's create it, um, a, um, let's create a directory to write some code. So I'm going to call it episode one, Nats publish and subscribe part one. And so let's go into that directory and then I'll do visual studio code in this directory. And of course my directory is empty. I don't have anything in this directory and let's kind of zoom in and make it nice and big so that, um, you know, Everybody can see it. Maybe that's too big. I don't know if there's such a thing. But the first thing we're going to start with is let's do a Go Nats application, right? Um, <laughs> Go Nats. And basically, it's just going to be a simple application where we do, well, maybe I should call it not Go Nats, but rather um, let's call it uh, main.go. Let's call it um, publish. So let's do, or let's subscribe actually, because we can publish from the command line. So let's write a subscriber. So go subscribe, right? And so what does this application look like? Well, for Nats, it's super, super easy. And one way you can, you know, look at the documentation and it's probably going to go through some of those things. But if you go back here to, you know, their main site, Nats.io, and you click on GitHub and you go there, you see the Nats server, Nats Go, you see Nats Client for Nats. So if you click on this, it's going to tell you how to get started writing Go application, right? You can get um, the Go Client or whatever, but um, I'm just going to jump right in and start writing some code. And of course, you can look at essentially what we're going to be tested is this simple code here. And so let's go write it. So we go over here and of course we have to do package main and then we do funk main of course and for nats it's super easy how you connect to something well 
For example, you can see the URL you want to connect to. It just look like a HTTP a web browser URL. And that's one thing that makes it super easy. So we can say we want to connect to a NAT using NAT protocol, local host, colon port 4222. If you remember, that's where it says that it's listening for client connection. So listening for client connection on 4222. So as a client, we want to connect to that. Well, NATS itself um, has this idea of a default connection, I think it's called. Um, default, uh, let me see what it is that they put in the documentation here. Um, default URL um, that you can use. And this just simply means literally exactly what I have here in code, the default URL. This equates to the exact same thing um, that I have here, colon, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's not HTTPS, it's just NAT. So if you don't want to specify a server, so this is gonna work for us because the client that we're gonna be writing is gonna be connecting locally. But if it was gonna connect a server somewhere else, of course, then we'll say NAT remote server, whatever that remote server name is, right? Um, host name is. So um, let's just leave that in code because um, the way it allows to come back and change it later on. All right, so once you have a URL you're gonna to connect to, then you just say, I wanna create, I wanna to connect to NAT. So you say NAT connect, and then you get passing this URL. And later on, we'll see how you can pass your security information with this connection. Now, right now, I'm not getting any NATs help because I haven't imported the, the NATs package. So that is where you can go and do this. You can do import go NATs. And you put that there. And then now um, what we can see is from this, uh, let's see if it's gonna complete it. Uh, it doesn't show it, but um, I should be able to get back some help telling me that oh, this returns in that connection, which I'm calling NC and an error in case there's an error. Usual go stuff. And we can say if, you know, error not equals to null, then we can do log ROS. For example, I look like using log ROS, log ROS fatal. No, um, let's see, open this up a little bit. See, this is a little bit too tight because it's so big. And I'm on a fairly big screen too. So let me see here, open this up a little bit. All right, so go back here. And so I'm connected to my local NAT. So this should give me a connection. If there's an error, program fails. But other than that, I have NC, which I haven't used yet. So I'm gonna say before, that and see that close. That's it, just the foreclosure. Now I'm not getting all the help that I expect to get. And um, the other thing I need to do actually is I need to do a module. That's why I'm not getting help actually. So go that mod and so I'm gonna say module, let's call it go nuts. Right? Let's call it that. I don't think that's gonna conflict with anything else. And so that's it. Um, Let's see, oh, um, this is inside of my application there. I don't necessarily need it inside my application. I can put it out here. And so you can see now it's giving me this message. And if I click here, it's saying that I'll do a um, go get. And so I'll just right click here and have it run from VS Code. All right, so this is good. And then I should be able to save and get um, Logros and same thing, it's gonna tell me I need VS Code, um, I need to get it. So I get both of those two things and so that's fine. All right, so you could run go get from the command line. All right, so that is fine. And I mean, I can run this right now if I CD. So what I'm gonna do is open up another terminal here. I'm going to CD into my go subdirectory and I'll do go run and main and so it connected exit i did not get any error because it connected locally so i'm saying this is a subscriber so how do we subscribe let me close this here so the way to subscribe is now that we have a subscript uh, we have a connection to that is to simply say i'm interested in message for a certain topic so we'll do nc that subscribe and as you can see i have two subscription i can do i can just simply say subscribe to this topic and give it a callback message, which you can barely see. And then it returns to me a subscription, which I'll later cancel, returns me an error. 
um, it will let's see subscribe will express interest in the given topic right and um, or I can do this is a um, subscribe sync which will express interest in this topic and will be received synchronously and so basically what it means is that you will have to when you get a subscription you will have to say like get next message get next message whereas if you use the first one subscribe you were saying i'm expressing interest in a certain topic and then that as it's pushed to get the message it pushes to you and you have to handle them as quickly as possible now there's no timeout associated with really but it just means that oh you never know when a message is going to come and so this is more like asynchronous because you're registering a call back to when message come into nas it puts it to you you get it and you work on it the other one sync the reason why they call it sync is because you're going to subscribe to a topic just taking one parameter here for the subscribe function surprise sync function you get back a subscription and then on that subscription you can call subscription that next message we'll probably play a little bit with both of those and you can see but let's just do the simplest one which is um subscribe to a message and have nas pushed to us as quickly as possible so subscribe and then the topic we we're interested in based on our example that we were doing back here just now we were pushing to um i think it was weather to events that local right so let's just do that let's say we're interested in all messages that post the events at local. Notice I did not have to create any kind of schema or anything. And then this is our callback message handler here. And all this is, if we go look at what this looks like, um, man, I'm trying to get some um, help from my system here. Um, but basically what this looks like is a function that just take a NAT message and return nothing. So it's a function that takes a message that is a NAT message, this guy, and it returns nothing. That's it. That's what the, the callback look like. So, oh, sorry. It needs a pointer here. So a pointer to NAT's message. So that's what that a callback look like. And so once we register our function now, NAT is going to be able to just um, call us each time a message comes in. So how do we get the message? If you look at message, it has a few fields. It has data, which is the bytes, as a slice of bytes and go. It has reply, which we haven't talked about yet, which is a string. And then subject, which um, is a subscription associated with this subscription, uh, with this message, this message, um, who's a subscriber. And so it has the subject upon which this message comes. And you'll see why that's going to be important in a bit. So let's do this. Let's just say we do fmt that um, printf, and then we say message received on subject um, percent v, and then um, message right or the data if you like data percent v and then we do a new line and then we do that and let's go over here a little bit and we say message that subject remember um this is the subject the message was received on so i think that's just a prompt like that and then here we're gonna do string message that data and so um this should give us the data and that should be it. Now, once we subscribe, this is going to continue and our program right now will just simply end. And so it's not gonna be much fun. It's gonna be like, you know, if we were to run this now, it's gonna subscribe and just end, no big deal. So what we want is to hang around a bit to get some messages and do something interesting. So what we'll do, and notice I didn't save our subscription. What I could have done is save the subscription. And then of course, I don't really care about error right now, but um, I could have checked for error if we had error subscribing, um, but I'll keep it simple. And then now I have a subscription. I can say subscription that unsubscribe, for example, unsubscribe. And so I just unsubscribe or say that, oh, I no longer interested in getting messages 
um, or remove interest from this given topic, right? Um, which is the topic associated with this set event, the subscription. So let's just um, sit here for a while. So I'm gonna say time that sleep and let's sleep for like, I don't know, 10 seconds maybe. Time that seconds, let's do that. And see how many messages we can get in that time. And so um, let's clean up. Um, I don't really need to see this is running. So I'm going to, let's, um, let's just kind of close it up. I don't need to, it just tell me that all NATS is running. So it doesn't provide any additional information. Um, so let's do go run and that's running and it's waiting for messages. And then I'm gonna go NAT, um, NATS publish and we will publish some messages. And as you can see, I'm receiving those messages and it's telling me that how I retrieve them on the event at local topic. Well, right, this is continuing and my program ended after 10 seconds. So that's why you can see here, it took 10 seconds to run my program. Cause that's what I said. I said, I want you to stop after 10 seconds. All right, so that's how easy it was. So let me just review. Let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see. Really, there's just three function calls. One, to connect, which is this guy. I mean, this is just the value. So one was to connect to that. The other one was to subscribe. And the other one was to unsubscribe. And I said, this is on optional. And this is the only other one that really should do cleanup. So there's like three function call and we're already receiving messages from NATS. That's how easy it is. Now I've published it from the command line, but as least you can see. Now, the other thing we can we could do is simply to, and let me show you something else. So let's say I was to run this program a little bit longer. I'm going to put um, for one minute right now. Let's just say one minute and let's just run it again. And here I'm going to Okay, sure, I could send 10,000 messages, but why? Um, we already know this is working. So let's do 10 messages. And I send those 10 events and we receive them at the top. That's fine. But what about if I decide to publish to a different topic? Instead of local, I'll publish for, I don't know, uh, let's get remote just because we use local. And you can see I send this message, but when I publish to remote, Above there, my application did not get it. Let me just show you, it's still running. I published to remote, doesn't get it. I published to local, it gets it. Makes sense because we're listening for message on local only. But you see how easy it is for me to just publish a different topic? I didn't have to create that topic. If anybody has ever used anything like, um, you know, Kafka or any of the other things, you have to create the topic first, you have to say what the replication is and all these other things. No, here I just start publishing. And so, and that works. Now, what if I want my application to be able to receive messages on the topic event and any other subtopic, right? Whether it's local, remote, yada, yada, error, this, whatever else. For that, I can simply do star and I can do also this. But, um, their reason, these two things have different meaning and we're not gonna get into it right now, but for now, I'm just gonna say star here. And let's rerun, let's clean up um, the top here and rerun. Ah, oh, sorry, I gotta clean up and I have to rerun my go run. So I'm gonna listen there. And I'm gonna say publish to local, it gets it. And let's publish to remote and notice it gets those. So essentially by putting the star, I'm saying, I want everything, every subtopic of events. And notice my application wasn't created specifically so much later, 10 years later after I write this application to listen to things on events, I can say um, new topic. And my application is still gonna be able to receive those messages. So this is where the flexibility comes in. Like it's super cool that you can write an application um, to express interest in a subtopic that didn't even exist at the time when you wrote the application. And now as other clients come on and start publishing, you can imagine this is just a new publisher that start publishing new information on events that new, and my application could still get it. And technically, depending on how I write it, could interrogate the message because you can see, I can say, well, 
is it a subject that I expect or whatever? And I can do different things. I could route them different places or something like that. So that's super cool and super simple. So, okay. So now we see how to write a subscriber. Writing a publisher is not very different from this. And it's actually so similar, in fact, that I'm actually going to copy um, this code. Oh, one last thing. I wanted to show you how we can have a subscription and just wait on it. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to comment out this part. So here's where you can think of we're doing asynchronous, where we register a callback to be able to get messages as soon as they come in. Now, one of the things that you might want to be able to do is you might want to have a subscription to this topic and just check and see when you're ready, is there a message? And if there's a message, I get it. And then I work on it. And then I can take my time and figure out when I go back and check for another message. And that doesn't push them to you as fast as possible, right? And so in that case, what you want to do is have a subscription. And so that would be like this. And then I can check and see if uh, my subscription was successful. And if I can do log Ross, log Ross fatal if that subscription wasn't successful. And then what I can do then is I can say, um, I want to do subscription that um, next message, you know, I think uh, this, there we go, get the next message. And you can give a timeout, like how long do you want to wait for that message? And so let's say we're willing to wait up to one second for a message. So time that, you know, second. And if the message doesn't come, then, you know, of course, that's okay. And here we can see that we get the same message and an error back. So we have MSG and we have error. So I'm going to ignore, well, let's just take the error. Okay. So I'll do that. And then now, what I can do is I can say for, you know, over forever or whatever I want to do, I can do for MSG that, that, that. And so long as error not equals to nil, so long as I don't have an error, then I can sit here and just get my messages and, you know, process them. And so let's do this. And so. There we go. So let me show you what this is about. So, oh, that for this, da 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 da. Um, so I can do something like this, you know. So I can do, actually, I can put this another way. I can do for or along if, you know, this, da da da, a message is not equal to null, then do that. So I can do that. And now I don't really need to worry about the sleep anymore. I don't have to sleep for a thing. I can just sit there until there's an error. And the error would occur if I don't get a message for a second, right? So that would allow me to exit my program. So now let's see. Um, so subscription, exit a subscribe sync, sorry. Subscribe sync, synchronous. And so now I've done that. Now you can see my Go code is give me a warning at all. It's, this is unreachable code. It thinks it's unreachable because the for loop is going on forever and forever. But here I can do, um, if we have an error, then um, I break out of this loop. All right, um, else, else break out of this loop. And then now that I'm going to break out of this loop, then I should be fine to continue to the bottom here. So yeah, so keep checking. And then if there's an error, like a timeout, otherwise this is going to wait here for one second, up to one second. If a message comes in before that second, then I process it. If I don't get a message, I break out to the loop and I unsubscribe and end my program. So that's all there is to it, right? And so if we look at the new code, after I connect, again, this remains the same. The only difference now is that instead of doing this a synchronous subscription. No, I'm doing a synchronous subscription where I have a subscription, but I choose when I get the message to process. You can imagine that instead of sitting in a for loop, I do something, go off and do a bunch of other things, and then I come back and I check for a message. Now, there's something that I haven't mentioned here about NATS and the way it works. It does not hold on to any message. If there's a subscriber, when the message comes in, it gives it to the subscriber. If the subscriber is not there, that's it. The message is gone. So if you don't check for a message, then you know, forget it. It doesn't hold on to it. All right. So let's run this now and see. So I'm gonna clean up 
I'm going to go run again. And so I'm waiting there for at least one second. And notice how um, we have invalid memory thing. Where is that now? Da, 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 line 33. So what is on line 33? Um, here. Um, so we have an error. So let's see. So it's nil. So we just return. Let me see. Message receive. Ah. Oh, IEV. Receive on topic. So other than that. Okay, um, so apparently we can get a nil message even if we wait and it times out. Um, so let's see. Um, so if we have, if the message is going to be nil, then I don't really want to check for error. I'm just going to ignore that and just check for a nil message anyway. And so I'll do that, go back here. I mean, it probably still makes sense to check for errors. Um, I'm going to run it. I'm going to wait. And we get nil. Um, we know it timed out. And so that's OK. Let me give it a little bit more time than one second. Let me give it five seconds. Maybe I might need a little bit more time to get set up. So let's give it 10 seconds. I'm going to run it. And so I'm going to wait here. And we should see that my Command line is going to tell me I thought it waited for 10 seconds um, because, you know, it's blocking there. And there you go. Waited 10 seconds, no message. All right. So let's go back up, run it. And this time we're going to send it some messages. And there we go. And it worked the same way, right? But remember, I was sitting in this while loop, um, this for loop, waiting for messages to come. So, so long as I keep feeding it messages, it's not going to exit because it's going to always have something. So let's go local, remote, local. And so you can see it's still processing those messages because it's in there requesting it. OK, so that's good enough for subscribe. What about publishing? Very straightforward. What about publishing? Let's go to publishing. And I'll create a directory, call it new folder, go dash pub. And because I like talking so much, that's why these applications, don't, my examples don't go so fast. Like somebody has shown you this would have been done already, like five minutes. They'll show you how to do this and then be done. I'm over here like fooling around, going back, all that other good stuff. Um, hopefully you're having fun and you're learning. Um, that's the key thing. I don't care to rush through these things. Um, so let's do in pub. Let's close this. And so we're doing the publish right now. And so again, same thing. We're going to connect. So that doesn't change. The only thing that changed now is that we have to do instead of a subscription, we're going to be publishing. And so I'm going to get rid of this and we'll sit in a loop and let's do for I colon equals to zero. I less than, you know, let's do 10,000 E to the five or something. Uh, I plus plus. And so we'll sit in the loop. And what we'll do is we'll just make a message and then send it. So why don't we make a message? So we'll say s colon is equals to fmt that s sprintf. And we'll make a message and we'll call it message percent v and that. And then let's just do um, data is some random number, maybe. I don't know. That's our message. And so, um, so message is V, message number one, let's say. Well, that's going to start from zero, but that's okay. And then the data, we'll get a random number generator and we'll just, we'll just say int n um, between, you know, maybe 10,000 or something. I don't know, something like that. And so we'll come up here and we'll get a random number generator by doing var and we'll do our random number generator that new random number generator is equals to ran new and then ran that new source and then that's essentially it so if this is not familiar for you to you um, do spend some time examining it basically i'm just creating a new random number generator but i want to seed it with some um a new with source so they can create new numbers every time different set of numbers are like on random, the random number generator. So I'm just using the current time and that's basically it. Um, 
So nothing fancy there. This has nothing to do really with the sub creating messages um, with publishing. So now that we have a message or we have something we want to publish in Nats, what all you're doing is sending is just bytes. And that's perfect because Go has an easy way for you to convert a string to a slice of bytes and then back and forth, right? So, and we've seen that in our subscribe. For a subscribe or a message, we just take this set of bytes, which is just a slice of bytes and cast it as a string and that's it. Nats doesn't really care what is it that you're really doing. You could actually send like an image or something. It doesn't care, just a slice of bytes. But it's a text protocol and we're gonna see that when we get into the detail of Nats. So here, uh, we're not receiving a message, we create our message and we wanna send it. So um, to send our message, um, we just simply do Nats NC that publish and we're going to say the topic we want to publish to and in this case it's events that bold let's call it and um then we need to pass our data which as a string this is super easy in go since we can just simply say cast our string as a slice of bytes and there you have it that's good so we don't need to do any of this good stuff we don't need to sit in a loop for um, we don't need to um, you know unsubscribe because we're a publisher. And again, look how easy this is. Connect. Make sure you the foreclose connection, and then start sending data. That's it. Um, there are two type of publishing that we can do, and we'll do that in the very next video because this video is already long enough. So let's wrap it up. So let's um, make sure that uh, we go into our pub directory. And we're going to do go run main and we do like that. Oh, so I have to save, bring in my imports for this guy. Um, so rand, rand, this is D rand. Save this, bring that in. And I go back, clean up and run this and it's doing its thing. Um, it's finished already. So um, that's how fast it runs. But if I start this, um subscriber and then i rerun this um you can see um this guy sent you know ten thousand messages or whatever and um there it is the messages were received um so let's see yeah that's how fast it is it was it just sent those messages um the other guy maybe wasn't able to keep up because we we're doing the synchronous thing you know just trying to receive the message and then to go back and receive it whereas if we were able to if we change this to a this guy where we have we did it this way instead, um, we should see the ten thousand messages that we sent. And yeah, maybe here we need to sleep for a minute. We can find other ways of dealing with this, but let's do this. Let's go back, rerun it. Oh, is my message I'm publishing? Am I putting a new line in it? Ah. Yeah, I don't need an extra new line in my message that I sent. Okay, and that's a big deal. So, okay, so we have this guy, subscriber running, and then our publisher running, and there we go. See, about 10,000 messages, you know, finished. All right, and that's how easy it is. Um, the reason why my subscriber is still waiting is because we told it to, you know, sit around and wait for um, one minute. So, so that's why. Um, so it's going to give up in a little bit. Um, but hopefully you see how powerful this little app is. <laughs> it's about 10 megs or something, but it's really awesome. I really love it. I don't think that it replaces gRPC, nothing like that. You're going to see a bunch of capabilities in NAS though. I love you to actually use it with gRPC, with WebSockets. We're going to get to all of that and that in this little like filler set of videos, but when we actually cover NATs. Um, I'm still going to do about two or three more filler videos on NATs. The next one is going to be how to do um, reply messages. And then we'll see a little bit on streaming. But at least hopefully this pique your interest and you're super excited to play with NATs and also to do it with me when we finally cover it. If you can't wait and you go ahead and you start messing with it, hey, more power to you. It's really, really lovely piece of software and the documentation is super awesome. I encourage you to, to check it out if um, you need to start using it. All right then, take care, stay safe, 